This is a gear, horsepower, and fuel economy indicator that I made with an Arduino and a mini OLED screen. These two LEDs on the left blink to help me time shifts. The green one blinks near 2000 RPM for smooth shifts and conservative driving. And then the red one blinks when the engine is in the power band. The big button on the right, that's just the reset button. Arduino knows when I'm pressing the clutch by reading the state of this switch, which I have attached to the pedal assembly. As you can see, pressing the clutch activates the switch, which is picked up by the Arduino and then displayed on the screen. The rest of the information on the screen is derived from the data from the OBD2 port. So, how do you go about making one of these screens for yourself? Well first, let's start with a list of materials. To begin, you're going to need a car, uh, preferably one that's newer than 2008, because then with a reasonable degree of certainty, you can guarantee that this will work. If it's older than 2008, you should make sure that the communication protocol for your OBD2 port is CAN bus or CAN. Um, aside from the car, you're going to need an Arduino Uno, a 1.3 inch SPI screen, or an I squared C screen would also work. Uh, you would have to use slightly different wiring than what I'm going to show you in this video, but it should be pretty simple to figure out. Uh, you'll need some jumper wires with male and female ends. You'll need a Freematix OBD2 UART adapter for Arduino. And bear in mind that I'm going to include links in the description for these parts. Uh, you're going to need some buttons. You're going to need some LEDs. Uh, I used green or red. Um, but really you can use any color you want. Um, oh, you're also going to need the resistors to keep them from overheating if you decide not to make them blink. Uh, you'll need a soldering iron, uh, which is kind of optional. You'll also probably want to use a 3D printer to make the housing for this screen, uh, especially because I already have the design of it uploaded on Thingiverse. Um, if you don't want to use a 3D printer, you could always make this enclosure out of, I don't know, cardboard or whatever. You could probably get pretty creative with it. Alright, anyways. To get started, you should download Arduino IDE if you haven't done so already. This is a software you use to create or edit sketches or codes that you can then upload to your Arduino board. Um, to get yourself familiar with uploading codes or sketches or even making them, um, check out a little tutorial uh, which I linked here in the description below. Um, additionally, if we're on the subject of tutorials, to get familiar with uploading libraries to Arduino IDE, which is super important for this project, you should check out this link. Um, and finally, to get familiar with actually connecting components to your Arduino board with a breadboard and wires, you should check out this tutorial. Um, next, you're going to want to install some libraries. Um, you're going to need Arduino.h, u8g2lib.h, SPI.h if you're using an SPI screen, wire.h if you're using an I squared C screen, and you know the code that I uploaded, I included both SPI and wire libraries um, just to make it usable for both options. Um, but you know if you're using an SPI screen, you don't need wire.h and vice versa. Uh, finally you're going to need obd.h, which isn't available through the normal uh, process of including Arduino libraries. Uh, that's why I included a link for this library. Um, but if you're buying the obd2 adapter, you should see a link to the libraries as well. Okay, now let's integrate your OLED screen to your Arduino. Um, this is one of the trickier parts of the project, uh, just giving you some warning. Uh, when you installed u8g2lib.h, uh, one of the libraries in your Arduino IDE, um, you also downloaded some example code which was included with the library. Um, you can access this by going to the library folder um, following a very similar file path to this. Uh, to start off, I recommend using the hello world code which is in the page buffer folder. Um, just for simplicity. Now, looking at all of this code, 
you'll notice that all of these constructor calls are commented. Um, you know, that means that there's two slash marks in front of each line, meaning that once this is uploaded to Arduino, Arduino won't actually read those lines with the slash marks. Um, so now you're going to have to find the correct constructor call and uncomment it, meaning you have to remove the two slash marks in front of it. Once you get this right, you'll be able to display hello world on your screen with no glitches. Notice that in each of these constructor calls, uh, the pins that you plugged into your Arduino screen are called out. Um, each time you try one of them, you have to make sure you get these numbers correct. You'll also notice that a lot of these constructor calls don't have the correct number of pins called out that relate to your OLED screen. And that should knock out a lot of them right off the bat. You know, you'll immediately know that those aren't going to work. Okay, now if you're using an SPI screen, I'm just going to give you a, a quick little description of the pins being used. Um, the CLK pin on the screen is referenced by clock in the code. The MOSI pin is data in the code. CS is just CS. Uh, DC is DC. Those are pretty self-explanatory. RES is reset. And then finally, your little screen is going to have VCC and GND pins. Uh, the VCC should be connected to your 5 volts output on your Arduino. And then ground should be connected to, well, I mean ground. <laughs> Pretty simple and straightforward right there. Um, anyway, once you get Hello World to display on your screen, you should switch the constructor call I have in my code with the one that worked best for your screen. Um, you can also play around with other examples uh, in the uh, Arduino library for OLED screens if you want to learn more on how to code displays. Now for an easier part, uh, which is connecting your clutch button and the LEDs. Okay, for example, for my red LED, I connected the positive or long end of the LED wire to pin number 8 on my Arduino board and I had the other end of the LED connected to digital ground, which you know is on the same side as your numbered pins. I followed this same logic with the green LED and the clutch button. Um, you can use the same numbered pins I used, or you can use different ones, but you have to make sure that what's called out in the code for your LED, you know, let's say you use pin four, is the same as where you plug your LED in on the board physically. Those numbers have to align in order for your code to work. Uh, once you have your screen, your button, and your LEDs integrated with your board, um, and you're using my code, if you drive the same car I do, you're all set, but chances are that you don't. So here I'm going to show you how to customize this code for your particular car. Now, to reiterate, unless you have an 8th generation Honda Accord V6 with the manual transmission, my code is probably going to produce nonsense on your screen. So, uh, let's start out with modifying the gear readout. Uh, as you may have already noticed, the only sensor my system uses is a simple momentary push button for reading when the clutch is active. Um, you also might know that most OBD2 systems probably don't give you a PID or a variable which states which gear the car is in. So, how does my Arduino know to display the correct gear that the car is in? Uh, the key is reading the speed of the car and the RPMs at the same time. Uh, so you see, each gear of your car has a unique ratio for the engine speed and the forward speed. Um, and then this depends on the gear ratios your car has in its transmission um, and the diameter of its wheels. So really the ratio or the variable your Arduino should be looking for here is engine RPM divided by car speed. Um, you can calculate this ratio for each gear that the car has and then plug it into your code. Um, to do this, first you're going to have to look up the gear ratios for your car 
and the final drive your car has, um, which is in its differential. Um, and now here is the logic for finding the RPM over MPH ratio for each gear. Now let's pretend for a second that you don't have a speedometer and your car only has a tachometer from which you can read RPMs, but you still want to figure out how fast the car is moving forward. So what's a factor that you can multiply your RPMs by in order to get your car's forward speed? Well, let's start by getting RPMs into radians per second, which you can easily do by multiplying RPM by 2 pi over 60. Now, to get the angular velocity of your car's wheels in radians per second, we need to apply the appropriate speed reductions, and these are provided by your car's gears and differential for the purpose of torque multiplication. Here, G is your gear ratio for the particular gear your car is in, and F is your final drive. Now, we multiply this by your tire's outer radius and convert it to miles an hour by using a factor of 17.6. Here, G is your gear ratio, F is your final drive, and R is your tire's outer radius in inches. Notice that this calculation is consistent with the angular velocity equation from your high school physics class, in which you have V equals omega R where v is your tangential velocity, omega is your angular velocity, and r is your radius. Now, to get your RPM over miles an hour ratio equation, simply divide 1 by the RPM multiplier we determined earlier, or find the inverse of it. Great, once you have that, you can calculate your ratio of engine RPM to miles an hour for each gear your car has. I suggest you make a table such as this one, which I made for my own car. Now I noticed in the real world you don't get such nice tidy numbers for these ratios. You get more of a rough range for each gear, which I'm assuming is due to slippage and tolerances in the transmission and final drive, as well as tire pressure, bumps in the road, you know, etc. Here you can see that in my code there is a range of RPM over mile an hour values, or M values, for each gear. These were determined experimentally with a modified version of my code, which just displayed the variable m instead of giving a horsepower readout. What I found really interesting was how the range of values got tighter as the car went into higher gears. Also, notice that I don't actually have a readout for reverse in my code. This is because my car gives a speed readout in an absolute value. So backing up at 10 miles an hour looks the same as going forwards in 10 miles an hour when it comes to the OBD readouts. Also, the M values for reverse and first gear just had too much of an overlap. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably wondering, how did I get a horsepower readout on my screen? Well, moving forward, you should keep in mind that my horsepower calculations are merely an approximation and not a derivation of an exact value. It is important to know that theoretically, power can be thought of as the rate of torque being applied, or torque over time. Here's a handy equation which relates horsepower to RPM and torque, with all of the necessary unit conversions being included with the factor of 5,252. Now some of you watching might own a car which already has a PID for torque, or in other words, your OBD2 adapter will output a variable for torque if you call it out. In that case, you're really lucky because you can just use this equation for horsepower in the code instead of this long one that I have written. All you have to do is switch out the equation, include a PID for torque in your code, and boom, your horsepower calculation is done. Now if you're like me and you don't have a torque variable coming from your OBD2 port, it's time to get a little crazy. Go ahead and look up the dyno readings for your engine. Here's one for mine, which is the J35Z3 VTEC V6. I used an application called Graph Grabber to approximate the X and Y data points of this torque curve. Since it starts relatively late in the RPM range, I approximated the torque behavior in the lower RPMs with a similar VTEC V6 engine, and then I used a linear relationship to approximate the curve to zero. I'll admit, these are some pretty brazen assumptions which is why you should take the horsepower readout your Arduino will produce using this method with a grain of salt, especially if you're idling or at low RPMs.
Anyway, once you have a curve and some data points in Excel, you can use a polynomial approximation to create an equation which follows your torque curve pretty closely. Essentially, you plug an RPM value into the equation and it gives you a torque value, assuming you're at wide open throttle. But wait, under normal driving conditions, you're not flooring it everywhere. This is where the engine load PID comes in. I'm not going to get into too much detail about what this variable is, but I included a link in the description for those who are interested to learn more about it. Anyway, the load is used as a coefficient for the equation we determined earlier for torque. Now, this line in the code will approximate the torque output of your car at any RPM at any engine load, and again, the accuracy is pretty bad at low RPMs. Now, we can use this torque value in the equation mentioned earlier for horsepower. Now, you shouldn't have to modify my equation for fuel economy in the code. It's pretty universal for all gasoline-powered cars. Uh, essentially, if you know that for every one part fuel, you need 14.7 parts of air, you can just use the PID that has mass airflow coming from your car to calculate how much fuel you're burning. And then, because you know how fast you're going forward, you can get miles per gallon. Uh, pretty simple, shouldn't need any modification. Now, to integrate your OBD2 adapter with your Arduino, simply plug in the green wire from your adapter into the RX pin, the white wire into the TX pin, and the red wire into VN. Finally, the purple wire should be plugged into ground. I saved this part for last because you may run into problems trying to upload sketches to your Arduino with this OBD adapter plugged in. Specifically, if you have your green wire from the adapter plugged into your Arduino's RX pin, you won't be able to upload any sketches. I also included a reset button on my build, but this is entirely optional, and honestly, it's pretty useless. Anyway, here's a good resource on how to wire one of those up if you still want to do it. Now, you can try all of this out while keeping all of your hardware plugged in on your breadboard. Just plug it into your OBD2 port in your car and see if it works. Uh, once you get it to function, that is, you know, screen turns on, displays all the information, you can print the enclosure I designed, you know, with a 3D printer, or you can make yourself a new one. You'll almost certainly have to design a clutch button frame, since the one I designed is very specific and it only works for the Honda Accord. And it might even be specific to the EXL V6 model. I haven't really seen any other Honda Accord clutches. Okay, if you've made it this far, then you're a trooper, because I'm not very good at video editing yet, and I know that came out like crap. Um, also, I'm not very good at Arduino yet either, so this project definitely has a lot of flaws. So if you're watching this because you want to make your own, then good luck to you. I really hope it works out. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you stay tuned for my next few videos.